Good morning. Good to see the faces out there and, and the eyes. Can't see the mouths and smiles, but we're happy to be here. And hopefully you enjoyed an extra hour last night to make up for the hour we lost last spring. It was nice to wake up in, in light instead of darkness. But then tonight, we will see darkness before we want to, too. So we like to welcome everyone watching on Facebook and live stream and those that are listening on KCMR. We welcome you to First United Methodist Church, Mason City, Iowa. Today is All Saints Sunday, so we will be recognizing those that have passed during our last time of recognizing All Saints a year ago. The uh, candles on the table have been lit for the 21 members that will be reading names later on, 21 loved ones later on. The eight, 21 candles will be lit for members of our church that have passed and also others. And uh, we welcome our triple light there to, for our worship. And we hope those of you that are home watching will light a candle and feel the light and presence of Christ during this worship service. The beautiful flowers today are from the funeral of Velva Peterson, which we celebrated on Friday. Lovely bouquets the family shared with us. We thank Gary and John and, and Jay and Mary for helping out with our service, along with Lori and Lisa. And Pastor Carol Kress will be leading the service today. And we joined in our call to worship. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it belongs to the Holy One. Look, God is calling for us. Can you see him? Let us be glad and rejoice. It is time to start climbing up the sacred hill. We go there to receive God's, God's blessing. blessing. And so we, we rise and we sing for all the saints, verses 1, 2, 4, and 6.
Join me in prayer. Faithful Redeemer, you are the beginning and ending of all things. You promise to wipe away every tear that death and sorrow will end. You have made a home beside us, and you are our protector, leader, and friend. Teach us to live as the saints you call us to be, that we may turn from trouble and focus on your way. In the name of the blessed Jesus, amen. Our hymn of preparation is Hymn of Promise. And you may and be you seated. May be seated. beautiful song. What a precious and hopeful promise that the Lord our God has given to us, not just in nature, but in the beautiful words of scripture that we turn to on this day. And so we do turn to scripture and we hear the words of the Beatitudes, the blessed bees, some of you may remember. And we are reading from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you 
and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before. May God add blessing and understanding to this, the reading of our sacred text. Amen. Let us pray. God, you have given to us these beautiful words, these wonderful words of life. And you have asked for us to consider them this day, which is called the Day of the Saints. As we meditate upon them and as we bring our hearts unto you this day, O Lord, might we find within the words that are said and within the images that come to our mind, inspiration and hope, healing and promise that we might walk through another day focused upon your cross. So hide me in the shadow of that cross that it would be your truth, your light that shines forth. Amen. Yes, indeed, we are here today and this is the day that the church does call All Saints Day. And if someone, and it is a scripture that you heard today that is commonly read on this particular Sunday when we remember All Saints Sunday and we read it in honor of these Christians that we celebrate and we consider. Now, if someone were walking to the library or uh, down to one of the trails today and they pass by the church, that one might remember about All Saints Day and think that we are spending time in here remembering awesome people from the annals of history. Their thoughts might be of folks like St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland who brought Christianity to Ireland, or they might think of Joan of Arc who led her people to victory in the 100 Years' War. There are other Christians who kept the faith and who persevered through all kinds of advers adversity. And normally this passerby could go into the library when it is open in a normal season, and they would find books that recount all these amazing stories of self-denial, of sacrifice, and advocacy for the voiceless that was something that the saints offered to humanity in the name of Christ. They'd read about all kinds of people. Those are the ones we know traditionally as the saints. Now, when this particular day was set up long, long ago, it was set up by the church in remembrance of the early days of Christianity when we, to be a Christian was to be in danger for your life. Uh, Christians were persecuted. They were fed to lions. They were um, worshiping hidden away in catacombs. And, and uh, there was trouble about if you dare proclaim that you were a Christian. And no one wanted to forget about those folks. But when King Constantinople was converted to Christianity, he pledged that the state would protect Christians. And those days of persecution ended. But they didn't want to forget what people had suffered to come to that time. And that's when All Saints Day was created. Because those folks certainly did lay the foundation for the church upon which we have kept building and upon which Christ is the head. Generation after generation has laid layer after layer of stone. 
Now, though, there are other ways of understanding what it means to be a saint, aren't there? When I, a United Methodist, open up the scripture and I see Paul thanking the saints of Philippi for opening, um, for opening, for helping him while he is in prison and opening a way for the evangelists to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to other places, then for me, this definition of statehood begins to open up. And I see people who helped and who supported me by keeping me close to Jesus Christ, and I see how I can call them a saint too. But you know, not many of their stories are told in books that are shelved at the library. Their testament is much more likely to be found in a church directory or on a picture board are in a remembrance that a family and a friend tells me of them. The first 300 years of Christianity were rough times, there is no doubt about that, but you and I know of so many other people who have faced challenging times too. The way they continue to turn to the Bible the way they continue to pray and to help each other and to come to the church in search of God's peace in their lives, it gave them hope and it gives me hope too. And then there are those folks who just can't help it, but think about other folks and how they might help them along the journey. They must think and do for others. And oh God, am I so grateful a few of those folks pass by my path on my journey forward. We're going to lift up the names of some of those people today. And you might yourself wonder if you're ever going to belong on the list in the way that they belong on that list that we've been discussing but I want you to understand that God knows you. God loves you just how you are. And God is going to help you become the best version of yourself that you can become. There is safety, there is mercy, and there is healing inside of the relationship that God seeks to have with you. He gives you courage. He gives you boldness of heart to create something beautiful out of this mess of your life that you think is such a mess, not just for you, but for your children and for all of our children. We're here, and it is just a few days before a really dicey election is going to come about, right? And that is just one pressure that Christians are attempting to manage right now. The economy is questionable. There's this surge in COVID right now. The public schools wonder if they should stay in session. And if they don't stay in session, then we're going to question if we should stay in session ourselves. People are going to wonder if it's better to stay in shelter in place or not. And regardless of what happens with this crazy election that's coming up, there are going to be a large group of Christians that are going to be saying to themselves, what will become of us now? What will become of us now? So what's the Christian to do? I suppose we should just round back to scripture, don't you? Back to scripture like this sermon on the mount 
and the Beatitudes once more because with regards to the Gospel of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount is like the highlight of everything that Jesus Christ embodied and everything that Jesus taught. You can go to any parable in the Gospel of Mark, you can highlight it with green and draw a line from that parable all the way back to the Beatitudes and hook it up with one of those Beatitudes or another. You can even do that with some of the things that Jesus said and did, including the crucifixion. is hooked right up there into the Beatitudes. Perhaps we saints in the running are being reminded of things that it is just so darn easy to forget. What the world values, you know, is awfully meaningless in comparison to what God values. It is too easy to worship the stuff that we have or the things that we want to have when everything that Jesus owned could fit into a backpack. When we are wronged, it is so darn easy to throw a punch when Jesus urges us to stop, to pray, to turn another cheek. It is too easy to turn the blind eye to the guy who asks for our coat when Jesus says, consider giving that guy your shoes as well. Those who mourn, Jesus says, those who mourn are blessed. Those who are humble are blessed. The healers are blessed. And ones who forgive are blessed. Once I took 40 days, I looked at the question of what do the Beatitudes mean to you? And I took 40 days and I read the Beatitudes every morning and every night. And I asked God to help me see how I had lived out those words and what I should do to correct my actions during the next day. And I will tell you, that was a humbling experience for me. And I thank God for getting me back on track again and again and again. I thank God even more for my brothers and sisters in Christ who are still walking ahead and behind and at my side on that journey that I took and I am taking because it is so important to be unafraid to share kindness, to love generosity, and to offer mercy when we can. Not that we offer it in ways that turn us into a punching bag, but we offer it in ways that empower us to move forward so that all can move forward. But what I haven't said is how the example of other people who were brave with their life, who love, who were unafraid of being kind, and who were generous with their mercy helped me keep the faith. You know, there was only one Joan of Arc who led her people into victory over war, and there was just one St. Patrick who took the faith to Ireland. And there were only two John Wesley, or two, two Wesleys, John and Charles, who laid the footings for Methodisms. But there are all kinds of saints who are out there for me and for you. It is their thoughtfulness, it's their unexpected kindness, the wisdom that they share when I really need to hear it, and the insight that someone has that is just so obvious once they say it, but wasn't obvious to me at the time. It's those folk who can offer a dose of tender loving kindness to me when I most need it, who remind me why I'm here. And you are the ones who remind me that God is here already. God is here to bless our brothers and sisters who have so much to handle right now. God is here to bless those who continue to grieve such losses this year. 
God is here and sees the ones who never get the credit for all their hard work. God blesses you. God sees it when you try to be a peacemaker or when you work to bring people together who have been apart. You'll be blessed. I know it. I know it because the Bible tells us that Jesus showed up where he was least expected. He was born in this humble manger among farm animals rather than in the jeweled crib at the palace. Rather than dining with the Sadducees and the Pharisees, he wanted to go to the home of Zacchaeus, that wee little man. He rode into Jerusalem on the back of a humble donkey, not behind a a chariot. See, God sees, God knows, and no act of kindness is too small. In each good that we offer to this world, in each good that we offer to this world, we prove that Jesus is still here and that love is real. In him, not in kings, not in chariots, not in palaces, not in the opinion polls. In him, there is hope for transformation of this world. And in him, we have promise of a new day, along with an invitation to stand with him at the time of its dawning. Yes, it is All Saints Day, and you, are one of these saints, too. Let us pray. Oh God, please know how grateful I am for these humble people who are here and for your partnership, the partnership that you have provided to all of us in living out your gospel. I pray and I hope that all of us will be rooted again in the promises that you offer to us. And we will know that you are present and you are at work in this world. And you are present and you are at work in and through these people. Help us be bold with our love, be kind in our hearts, and generous with our spirits. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And as we prepare to move ahead with our service, we have one more challenge and invitation that we are offering to each one of you at this time. And uh, Lori is going to explain that challenge and invitation to you. that all of you have had a chance to take a look at the kindness cards that were inside your communion bags this morning. If you haven't, you can go ahead and take a look at them. They look like this. We're really excited to bring these cards to you today. We think that the timing is impeccable for this. So I'm formally issuing you a challenge uh, to do whatever you can do to spread kindness and the love of Jesus. You have five of these cards inside your bag. Um, We want you to go ahead and spread some joy in whatever ways that you can think of. And you can brainstorm that in the way that you want. But just some ideas were, you know, maybe you have a favorite waitress at a local restaurant. You could leave her an extra big tip. Pay for a, a stranger's cup of coffee. Hand somebody a gas card while they're at the gas pump. Help your neighbor rake some leaves. Maybe bake them a batch of your best cookies. Send an old friend an unexpected greeting card. 
or maybe you know a single parent that may be struggling, buy them, you know, get them a grocery card or something like that, just to make their life a little easier. And then what we want you to do is to leave this card behind. Encourage them to spread, the kind, spread kindness around themselves and um, lead by example and sincerity. And we think that the world needs this now more than ever. So um, for those of you that are listening today on KCMR, um, you can give us a call in the office and I can surely mail you some cards. Um, or feel free to stop by the office during our business hours during the week and I can give you some cards as well. Or if you're watching on Facebook today, um, drop us a comment on the, um, on the video or you can send us a private message and I'll be sure to also acknowledge you and to mail you some cards at home. And while we want these random acts of kindness to have some anonymity to them, I would love it if you shared your stories with me about what you've done. Um, and what we can do is, without names, I can share those with others so that you can inspire others, you know, and maybe give them ideas of what you're doing so that they can also be encouraged to do the same. So are you guys ready to take me up on this challenge? Yes. Yes? Excellent. So we want you to go forth today and the rest of this month and spread some kindness and share some joy in the love of Jesus with others. Thanks, guys. We have a we have a malfunction. Here comes another one. It is really stuck. What's church if you don't have just a few little improvising moments? Let us remember those saints who've gone before us with loving, loving memories. Phyllis F. Let us pray. Grace to you and the peace from God who is and was and who is to come. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler on all of, of all earth. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints as we name them one by one. Amen. Phyllis F. Murphy. Jeanette J. Brockmeyer. Robert Bob Marolf. Dolores D. Lathrop. Charles E. Murray. Lloyd L. Tinky.
Cheryl A. Pippert. Kenneth K. Jorgensen. Carol Dean Mast. Keith R. Alberts. Bonnie M. Rodding. Thelma L. Dusher. Paula C. Stitzworth. Lee G. Haynes. Paul R. Clark. Phyllis A. Thrams Lewick. William B. McBurney Seeger. Velva L. Peterson. We light this candle for those who have died in harm's way through, um, through in harm's way this year. And we light this candle for those who have been um, um, victims of the COVID pandemic. And we light this candle for those who are unnamed, but whom we grieve in our hearts. I'll name those loved ones of First United Methodist Church. James Jim D. Johnson. Frederick Don Lyman. Virginia Midkiff Ashen. Curtis L. Johnson. Eugene V. Pfeiffer. Jeanette Jan Stiles. Jerry A. Flaherty. Leroy Lee E. Butler. J. Brett Eden. Carla Jean Kohler. Claire Ann Cruzenga. Lisa Ann Blackstock Scooby. Philip J. Overbeck. Alan M. Lathrop. Raymond L. Spurgeon. Calvin W. Voigt. Julie K. Butler Eaton. Sally L. Gothier. Reva A. Peddlety. Richard Dick Dodge. We'll join in our communion chorus, Holy Ground.
we are surrounded by the company of saints who are with us and who God says worship with us and who sing our songs and stand for us before God's holy throne. And we are all at the cross of Jesus Christ who is the one who redeems us, saves us, and allows us to come into this place and find a presence that's greater than the sum of the number of people who gather here in worship, but a presence that is sacred, holy, unifying, and healing. Our Lord Christ invites to his table all who love him and who seek to grow into his likeness. And so let us all draw near in faith and make our humble confession as we prepare to join in this sacrament of grace. We join in our confession. We do not presume to come to this table, merciful Gullard, trusting in our own goodness, but we trust in your unfailing mercy. We are not worthy that you should receive us, but give your word and we shall be healed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that is proof of God's love for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord, the great Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, He made us in his image to love and to be loved. And when we turned away and our love failed, God's love remained steadfast. By the suffering, the death, and the resurrection of God's only son, Jesus Christ, he delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us in a new covenant by water and on the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread he gave thanks and he, to God and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat and as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he gave thanks to you and said drink from this all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many in the forgiveness of sins so do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me and so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in jesus christ we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the, and the cup of Jesus Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his suffering. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. We worship you. Amen. So I ask that all of us would please stand. And as we stand, please take the cup that you have and the bread. And we remember, and you who are watching you too, may have your bread and cup has been consecrated as well. And as we break this bread and we remember the promises of Christ, we partake in the bread together. As Jesus said, eat as we do so in remembrance of him. And as we eat the bread in remembrance of Jesus, so too we take the cup. 
and we share in the cup, which is the cup that reminds us of Jesus' great sacrifice and suffering on our behalf. And we know that for our sins, he died. And through this cup, we are saved. Take and drink. Through these gifts and at this time, may the God of peace, the Lord of victory, and the one whose name we praise, be the God who brings you salvation and calls us all to victory on the day that we too come into his glory. Amen. Amen. And we'll sing our closing hymn. <laughs> I sing a sing song of the saints of God. go forth for God. Might we spread the blessings that we have known. Might others know him through those blessings that we share. Amen. <laughs>